Hello YouTube, this is Frugal. Here we are back again with another X-Plane short. I'm going to show you how to set up your controls, which is a fairly common question. I'm parked here in the Carinado C90 for X-Plane 10. I'm at Aerosoft Geneva and I've just plugged in my Cytec X55. And I'm going to set the controls up ready to fly this aircraft the way I want them set up. So go up to settings. First go into joystick and equipment. Now the first thing that you want to do is calibrate your joystick hardware. Um, although it might be calibrated in Windows, X-Plane really has no idea when you plug in a new set of controls as to what the values for the max ranges of all your controls actually mean. So here's what we do. Click on calibrate hardware. You can see there's a lot of twitching going on with those bars and we're just going to move every control now through its maximum range. You can see them all going through their max range now. It's the two throttles. This is one of the rotaries on top of the throttle. This is a rotary just underneath the throttle that's being moved now. There are two more rotaries on the X55 that I'm going to move here, these two. So that's all the rotaries done, I think. I don't think there are any more. Nope. So I'm going to move my rudder pedals now. Left and right. There they are. Let's set my toe brakes. So they're good. I'm going to move the joystick now. Fall back. Fall forwards. Fall right. And fall left. So with that done, I think, let me just check around here. Oh no, we've got two more axes there, which is the uh, mini joystick or mouse nipple kind of on the uh, front of the X55. So moving those as well. I think we're good to go. So everything is all done. We're all calibrated. We're all set. Next thing you want to do is go and set up your actual controls and assign them or your axes, first of all. Now my toe brakes seem to be already assigned because I've used these rudder pedals before. Your is already assigned, so that's great. Now this is my left engine. So I'm going to set that up here to throttle 1. I'm going to set this one to throttle 2. Now notice it's clicked as reverse. We'll change that. There we are. Now this rotary on top, I'm going to use that for my props. I'm just going to have one rotary to control all the props. So where is props? There it is. There's prop up the top there. So that's my prop pitch. Excellent. The rotary underneath the throttle, I'm going to use that for elevator trim. So let me see if I can find that in here. There we go. Elevator trim. Wonderful. The two rotaries on the base of the throttle, well, the top one I'm going to use for my rudder trim. There. The bottom one I'm going to use for my aileron trim. Great. Now pushing the joystick all the way forward, obviously that's pitch, that's already set up. Pushing it all the way to the left is roll, that's already set up. What we want to do now is actually jump into the aircraft and see that everything works the way it should. Now ideally you'd have your aircraft powered off at this point. I don't have that. Now I am using track IR, so I'm going to turn track IR on and recenter. Going to look down here, so this is left throttle, there it goes. And right throttle, there that goes. Let me try my prop pitch. Okay, good. That's all fine. Condition levers, I'm going to move those with the mouse when I'm actually flying. By the way, it's a little bit hard to see here because I'm using a wonderful plugin called uh, Max FX, which is kind of adding a lot of shadowing and making things a little bit dark in the cockpit, so I apologize about that. My rudder pedals all work. My brakes seem to be working because the uh, parking brake just went off. Let's pull that back on. Yoke seems to be working. And we can verify all this stuff outside as well now, so I'm just going to zip the view around. Zoom in a little bit here. So ailerons left, right, elevator, up and down, rudder, left and right. Good. Looks like we're all set. Next thing we need to do is set up the buttons. In fact, we won't. Next thing we need to do is set up joystick uh, sensitivity. So again, go into joystick and equipment. Click on null zone. This is where people get very, very confused, okay? You have two sets of sliders up here. The linearity sliders on the right and the stability sliders on the left. Now moving the sliders to the right for stability augmentation makes your aircraft less responsive but easier to fly. Typically you're going to have those about 50% or if you're an expert you're going to have a little bit less, maybe even 25%. So I'm going to move those down to 25%. Gives me more natural feel of the aircraft down here. Now linearity, what this means is as I deflect my joystick left or right or backwards or forwards, a linear input here, so full left on the pitch means that if I deflect my joystick 50%, then my elevators deflect 50%. If I were to move that to the right, 
then there will be much less linear um, results. You can see a little curve coming in here, which means if I push my joystick forward 50%, I'm probably only going to get about 5 to 10% deflection on the elevators. Same for roll, same for rudder. Put that wherever you're most comfortable. You'll find that some aircraft feel a little bit too twitchy. If that's the case, you want to move that slider up. If they feel a little bit too sluggish, maybe you want to move them down. Typically, I normally have mine around about 20%, which tends to feel pretty good. Okay, buttons. This is where people get very confused. You have two button tabs here, basic and advanced. Basic is the most common controls that most people want to assign. So toga, uh, mixture changing, pitch trim, um, landing gear up and down, all that good stuff. Very easy to assign stuff here. I've got a switch down here on my uh, throttle that I'm going to assign for gear up. I'm going to flick it now. So having flicked it, you can see it's currently assigned. Look at the number here. By the way, that's a, a joystick button ID. If I change the buttons here, you can see that number changing. So flicking it up, that button says do nothing at all. So we're going to change this to landing gear up. I'm going to flick the reverse. That's landing gear down. Now I can test that. You can see landing gear up and down. Wonderful. I want to set my flaps. I have another switch that I'm going to do for flaps up a notch and flaps down a notch. So let's flick that up. Nothing lit up. Let's find the landing flaps here. First person to spot the flaps wins. This is where it obviously gets confusing. People get confused and can't find stuff. But there it is. Flaps up a notch. And then the reverse flaps down a notch. So up, down, gear up, gear down. Perfect. Buttons advance works exactly the same way, but it gives you more options. Look at all this crazy stuff here. Now, I'm currently, I was flying a helicopter. So it's showing custom commands from the plugins. Plugins can provide you with custom commands. So on that helicopter, I just click on that button. And I would navigate around my directories here and I could find custom commands for that particular aircraft. We're not even going to worry about that right now. What I want to do is navigate up. There's the BK, by the way, that we were just messing with. Navigate up and find the standard commands for the sim. So let's click on sim here. Here we go. So navigating that slider up shows you all the standard categories of commands for the simulator so let's say I wanted to mess with the um, flight management system we can click on flight management system here and we have a bunch of different commands down here let's click on that one open and it gets very very confusing now but it's actually loaded in all the standard commands at this point so I can click through here and I can look at pressurization up and down I can look at my starters my igniters my electrical and so on and so on. Now electrical is kind of cool. Let's say I have uh, two switches here that I want to do for generator 1 on and off and generator 2 on and off. So electrical, I'm going to flick that button there. I want that button to be generator 2 on. So having flicked it up, it shows me that nothing's assigned. I click on electrical, generator 2 on. I'm going to flick the reverse, nothing's assigned. Electrical, generator 2 there, off. Now the other switch that I've got, this will be generator 1. So electrical, generator 1 on, and then backwards, electrical, generator 1 off. You see that? I know it's ugly and it's very confusing, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually very, very, very cool. You can, you've got a lot more control in here than you have out of the box with most other sims without buying an add-on or installing an add-on. So there's other stuff we can do, obviously, in here. If I want APU start, I can assign that to something or APU on and off. I can assign those as well if I really want to. Not going to mess with that. Keys is just like what you just saw. Most people don't need to mess with the key assignments. You're going to do all your assigning over here in Buttons Advanced and Buttons Basic. And finally, we have Equipment. So in Equipment here, you can specify whether you're using uh, CH products or E-dimensional glasses or whether you've got PFC hardware or even real GPSs. You can actually output data from X-Plane into a real GPS unit and actually use your real GPS while you're flying an X-Plane. It's that crazy. Matrox triple head to go. I'm actually using Track IR as you saw. I'm going to turn that off right now. So that's off. And with that done, we'll return to the sim. And now I should have mouse look enabled because I've just turned... There we go. Because I've turned Track IR off, now I can move with the mouse. So with all that done, all that remains now is for me to go flying. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.